Hi folks, welcome to Bear Mountain today. We are just kind of do a little bit of update on our daffodils. These are no-till and what we did is we also grew uh, annuals over the top of them last summer. So we're going to do just a walk through and show you what they look like now when they're coming into bloom. There's been a lot of questions on you know how to actually kind of run uh, planting over daffodil beds and what effect that'll have on the plants. Uh, lots of folks are asking questions like, well, what do I plant over it? Um, when do I do it? How long do I wait for the daffodils to die back? These are all pretty good uh, questions in a sense, but they're kind of when you, you, you think about it, they all kind of make a little bit of common sense. Lots of times people plant daffodils in their, in their flower beds and they'll have early spring color and then as they begin to die back, they won't dig the daffodils up, they'll simply plant their petunias or something like that over it. So the key point on this is, is what you're trying to do is not disturb the bulbs underneath, but planting a shallow rooted annual, uh, such as in our case, we used uh, zinnias and we used marigolds. And in this area out here, we used pumpkins, uh, ornamental pumpkins, fall squash, things of that nature. And those, what we do when we're putting these things in, we're putting them in as very young plants, but we're not disturbing the bulbs underneath. And everything we planted was also much later in the season. It was for late summer into fall. So we waited until, I'd say, we were 80% desiccated in terms of all these greens on the, on the daffodils had basically died back. So the plant had gone through its process and it was ready to basically be dormant. And actually watering it over the course of the summer for the annual plants that we planted on top made no difference to the bulb underneath. Um, the bulb stayed dormant until the soil temperatures uh, began to change such that it knew it was getting the signal to regrow again. Think of it similarly again, just like when you're planting petunias or or other you know, summer annuals over your daffodils that are in your perennial flower beds. It's the same idea. And it actually works pretty good. So we walked through our process of what we did in a previous video, but we just wanted to kind of say, you know, what you don't want to do is you don't want to disturb those bulbs. You don't want to say, oh, let's plant dahlias over it, which is a, which is a summer bulb or tuber type thing, or plant, you know, uh, corms of glads over it because these are all things that you would have to actually dig down into the soil uh, in some cases a few inches down and you would and run the risk of either hitting the bulb the daffodil bulb itself with your shovel or damaging it in some way when you actually had to dig out the dahlia tuber or dig out your glad corms um, that's a really important thing so what you're trying to do is just put something that's very shallow rooted and, and grows pretty fast now one of the things is we're in zone 8b so our daffodils this is the first of march and we've picked a bunch off of these guys but we're leaving a lot in here for color most of these daffodils are going to be finished for us by pretty much first second week of april they go really pretty fast from this point forward we've got several different varieties that mature this is our our last group that matures and, and we actually have some further over that are even, I think they're later than these ones too. So they're not up as far as you can see. So there's different levels of growth. Some of them are ready to pick. Some of them are just, you know, getting buds and they're, they're up straight. But um, all of these guys will basically be done um, by the second week of April, if it's that long. And then usually for us, it takes about a month, maybe a little longer. So we're talking about Memorial Day. By Memorial Day, these guys are laying flat. The foliage is 90% yellow to brown, and they've really pretty much, they're done. They're not, they're not gonna get any more photosynthesis, no more, nothing for the bulbs. So taking the, the refuse top off, or what we do is we just leave it in place, uh, we'll mulch, mulch over the top with some cut, cut grass, and which acts like a straw mulch, and then we just plant um, right around the first, second week of June, uh, our summer annuals over the top. And like I said, in this case, we used squashes and pumpkins out here and it worked out perfect. And we're going to do them again, right? Right. 
Well, the interesting thing about that is, is what we also did in between is we did like a three week occultation to knock back any grasses or weeds that are in the pathway. Um, I think what we're gonna, we're gonna do that again. So you say like uh, late April to Memorial Day. And because what we're gonna be planting in here this week is we're gonna plant a, a quick cover crop of crimson clover. We're not gonna allow it go to, to go to seed, but we're gonna put that in the pathways just to kind of outcompete uh, the spring weeds. And there's pretty much good rotted refuse from the pumpkins in here, and I think that'll do the trick to just continually knock the grasses and weeds back. And as you can see in here, after we applied our fall mulch of compost, uh, the daffodils did great, and we have no weeds in the beds really at all. So this, I think this process works pretty good. We've noticed, we've done this now for a couple of years, and we've seen really no you know, negative impacts in terms of the, da or the, da the daffodils themselves. And um, so I think the system works pretty well, and it really does a good job of keeping the spring weeds out of um, you know, the patch. So, let's talk now a little bit about how to harvest. Okay, when harvesting daffodils, there's certain things that you want to look for uh, to get the maximum vase life out of things. And what you can notice is in this patch, there are, these things are at all kinds of various stages. The, the first stage that you, you really want to start looking for for ready for harvest is when the tip has begun uh, to, to angle down. In this case, this guy is dropping. And there's also a paper sheath over the, for lack of a better term, a paper sheath over the, the flower bloom itself, and it has begun to split. So this guy here is within hours of being ready. Um, this guy here is another example is really perfect. It's at the perfect size. And, and that's the key is you want to get it when they're dropping. If you're seeing, you know, that your, your blooms are standing straight up, which we have an example over here, these guys are not ready. And they actually won't even open. Uh, we, you can, if you pull them and you pick them, they'll pretty much stay at that stage till they just senesce in the vase. So you really want to get it to the point where the bud is plumped, you know, it's begun its descent, and that's the time to do it. Kind of what they call gooseneck. Yeah. It's pointing down. If it's pointing up, it's not ready. But right. pointing down, it's perfect. And that's for the longest face life. But then if you want them shorter, faster, you can get them when they're just starting to open. If they open too far and the back petals start to reflex backwards, the one right in front of you that's okay but the one in the front by your knee is starting to the back petals are starting to reflex back that means it's pretty much gone through the whole glorious show and it won't give you it'll give you a couple of days but it'll be one of the first if you were to gather all of these um, blooms open and unopened those that are reflexed back will be the first to be go papery yeah and i guess also too if you look at the the back blooms they also tend to get a little more translucent um you can see through yeah, them. you can kind of almost see through them so they're kind of like it's it's too far along okay so the next thing is you don't cut them right um what we do is, I mean, some people actually just pull the entire, like this one's perfect, it's down. They, you know, you, you can reach down to the base of the plant and give it a tug and it basically snaps off. It pulls a little bit out of the top. What you don't want to do is you don't want to pull the actual daffodil bloom out. But as you can see, it kind of like snaps off really nice and easy. And it also makes harvesting quite fast because you're not sitting around trying to, you know, clip every single one out. Um, the other thing that we have noticed too is it tends to increase the base life when you do it this way. Um, when you're cutting them, it kind of, uh, sometimes you can end up with a lot more oozing. 
Um, what you'll notice is is this is not really oozing much sap out but if I was to cut it you know into the green uh, just walking around you get a lot of sap that would ooze out really fast well that also affects your vase life you know the more the more stuff just leaches out um, the faster these guys are losing you know stuff they need to to uh, be a, the best flower they can be a couple of tips on that is besides like he said um, that you um, pull them is um, you when you want to design with the daffodil with other flowers you need to let the um, daffodil sit in cool water for half day several hours let all in that sap or whatever it's called ooze out then change the water but do not cut them then you can design with those um, daffodils with other flowers like tulips if you let the daffodils go in directly with tulips without that treatment of just letting them sit for a while they will hasten the um, tulips demise much faster but the key is that once they've done that and they've oozed all that sap out um, drain the water out do not recut and then combine them with your other flowers second thing from personal experience when dealing with daffodils that you're pulling and you want to size them up and you do that against your clothes and stuff after a while it will eat a hole in your sweatshirt i have a sweatshirt that is just holy because of the all the years of daffodil pulling and straightening them up so i always have a little um disposable rag that i use um to, to wipe up daffodils and and deal with them so be prepared to have old clothes if you're going to harvest daffodils yeah the other key that we also found too for um helping if you're if you're pulling these for like some storage for a while and you're going to put them in a cooler uh say say you're selling them to to someone a farmer's market or whatever um, one of the things that we found that increases the vase life of these guys is uh, Chrysler makes a product called a CVBN Gabura pill. But what it basically is, is it's a slow release um, form of uh, chlorine bleach um, that is just at the right amount uh, that it doesn't harm the flower. But what it does is it helps keep that end sealed up. So actually um, what it does is it keeps Sealing isn't really the right term. It basically helps disinfect and keeping it from getting clogged uh, from its own, from the bacteria is taking off and uh, whatever leaches out of this thing. So whatever leaches out actually leaches out very little and then the amount that um, is out goes into the solution, but the end of it stays um, clean if you want to call it that. So you actually continue to uptake water and you'll get a longer vase life out of it. Um, I'm, I'm, this is not a shameless plug, it's just simply uh, something that seems to work quite well for us. So if you don't have access to that, then the water treatment that I mentioned, just making sure that you give them time to get all that ooze out, um, works just, just great without having to you know search for that pill right. and I don't but you can find it online if you if you look for right Chrysler. but I don't also recommend you trying to match your own drop of bleach or no because you got to be precise on that and I don't know what the precise amount is for a jar well that and and it's slow release right. so if you're putting bleach in from you know it's a typical bleach you buy from a store you're gonna get a big blast real fast and then it's gonna kind of, its effectiveness will probably drop off quite quickly. And the idea with this slow release, it's good for a couple of days. So it's just a small amount dissolving into solution, uh, enough to keep, uh, you know, depending on the amount and size of your, your container, um, you know, how many pills you would use. But basically it's, it's, it, it's the whole point, it's, it's that meteredness of it that makes the difference. So, any other questions? No, I think we've okay. Well, done um, our daffodils. We've got some harvesting to do, 
And so just want to thank you guys for joining us today in this quick walkthrough on our daffodil situation. And it seems like, uh, again, you can plant over them. So think of that bed space you got. You can use it in the summertime for something else. You get two crops off of it. Two crops, but you don't pull them out. Right. You don't them pull off. them out. Don't dig into the bulbs. That's the key. Yep. Oh, that's a good point. We didn't cover that. How did we you know, keep from disturbing them when the plants were done. The key to that is cut the plant off the annual. So if you're growing zinnias over it or something of that nature, don't pull the zinnia out with the root ball and all that kind of stuff. Just cut it off at ground level, you know, and then you can mulch over the top like we did here. And that, uh, the whole root system underneath will just decompose. So you, you don't want to disturb the soil any more than you need to just the most disturbance is probably at the time of planting when we dibbled in the plant that's it now are we done yeah yeah we're done right we're done okay so thanks for joining us today folks and um, as always stay safe out there and y'all have a good day bye-bye bye-bye